Hello everybody and welcome to Ubuntu for Beginners video course by Techler. In this chapter we will cover all the applications you need for your day to day use in Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu is a separate operating system, some applications that are available for other operating systems such as Windows or Mac may not be available for Ubuntu and vice versa. If you are migrating from a Windows or a Mac platform, some of the programs you are using have native Linux versions. For those that lack compatibility, the, there exist well-established free software alternatives that will cover up your needs. This section will recommend some of these free software applications that are known to work well on Ubuntu. So let's first start with the office suits. In Ubuntu, you may choose among many office suits, the most popular suit is the LibreOffice, which is which was formerly known as OpenOffice, which is included with the installation. So just go to Dash and type in Office. So here you can see you have LibreOffice, which includes and LibreOffice Writer, which is equivalent to your Microsoft Word. Calci, which is equivalent to spreadsheets. Impress, which is equivalent to your PowerPoint. So this was your office suits. It is included with the installation. Now we will go and see what email applications are available for Ubuntu. As with the office suits, there are multiple options for email applications. One very popular email application is Mozilla Thunderbird, which is also available for Windows. So I can type it Thunderbird, click, I can open the Thunderbird and you can configure your Gmail or whatever mail you want. Click on this, skip this and use my existing email. If you want to add your existing email, type in your name, type in the email address. Type in the password and click on continue. So it will look up for the configurations and it will take some time to load the configurations from its server. So your Thunderbird has automatically taken your configuration. So just click on done. So it will take you to the Google page for the password verification. Just enter your password and allow the application. So this is done. Here you can see it will take some time to sync the messages, the email messages. So here you can see uh, it's now syncing all my messages. On the left hand side in the notification area you can find a mail icon. Here, From here also you can access Thunder, Thunderbird. So that was your email application. Now we'll check about the web browsers. The default web browser in Ubuntu is Firefox which is already present on the dash as you can see it. Chrome is also available for Ubuntu. You can download and install Chrome from the software store. Uh, we'll cover the software installations in the coming chapters. PDF readers, Ubuntu has a default PDF reader known as events. It's, a doc it's the default PDF reader for Ubuntu. Now coming to music players, Ubuntu by default have a mu music player known as Rhythmbox for playing music and organizing your music you can use Rhythmbox there are there are many other applications also you can search the Ubuntu store for that so this is the Rhythmbox this you can use it for your music purposes and this is this comes to default with the installation now you have the video player you have by default a video player with Ubuntu 
but your VLC which is available for Windows is also available for Ubuntu. VLC is not installed by default, you need to install it from the software center. So we'll cover the software installations in the coming chapters. So let's move to the different sections. Now you, with Ubuntu you have an inbuilt CD DVD burning tool also. It's known as Brasero Disk Burner. So by the use of these applications, you can burn your CDs and DVDs. Ubuntu also have an inbuilt default photo management tool. You can view and manage your favorite photos with Shotwell, Ubuntu's default photo manager. So this is Shotwell, you can use this for organizing your photos. Now Ubuntu also have a graphics editor supported GIMP it's a very powerful graphics editor you can create your own graphics you can edit your photographs and modify your pictures GIMP is not installed by default but you can install through Ubuntu Software Center I have installed GIMP so that's your GIMP image editor Now you also have an instant messaging application by default which comes with Ubuntu. You can use Empathy as a default instant messaging platform and the beauty of it, it includes AIM, MSN, Google, Gtalk, Facebook, Yahoo. This means that you need only this one application to communicate with all of your friends so if you want you can add any application i'll add and show you how to add an application just select the application which you want to add and allow it and here you can see you have the Google account and if I minimize this here you can see my contact list and you can see all the my contacts are here with the GTalk or Hangout whatever you can say and you can access this from this mail icon in the notification area if I click on this I can set it to available busy or I can open empathy and this will show me my contacts so I can double click and open the chat window and I can chat it. You can add multiple accounts here. You can add multiple accounts to Empathy. And there's also one more popular instant messaging application known as Pigeon for Ubuntu. You can install it from the download center. Now coming to the wipe applications. The most popular application Skype is available for Ubuntu. It is not uh, installed by default. You can install it uh, using the software center. Uh, we'll cover this in the coming chapters. Now, the last part of this chapter, the BitTorrent clients. There are a number of BitTorrent clients for Ubuntu. But this, the default which comes with Ubuntu, which is very simple and lightweight, is the transmission. You have the transmission, you can use it as a bit torrent client. So that was all what you need to uh, work with your Ubuntu, all your Windows alternatives, your application for music, videos, Word, presentations, PowerPoints, instant messaging. We have covered almost everything. So this finishes this chapter number three. In the next chapter, we will be covering the, hard, <coughs> the hardware up aspects of the Ubuntu, the network manager, how to connect to the network, how to install the drivers, how to connect with the printers and all those stuff. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.